Hello everyone, my name is Zachary O'Shea and this is Box of Teeth. Every October for the last few years I've gone ahead and shared a Dungeons & Dragons monster every day and this October is no different. So here is your monster day for October 28th, 2023, part one. In week four for Monster Day October, what I do every year is Universal Antagonists. This is where I take a creature from a horror film, horror comic book, horror video game, something like that, that inspires me and convert it over to Dungeons & Dragons with a different name and definitely a twist on how it operates. The reason I do this is twofold. One, for my players, when I'm presenting this monster to them, they're already kind of keyed into the tropes that, that will be involved with it so they know how to react without going, oh, come on, when you set down something that is directly ripped off of a horror monster. And two, it gives all of you an idea of what it's like to take something that inspires you and reskin it to plug into your campaign. This is the very last Universal Antagonist for 2023, so it is a two-parter. This is part one, where we're going to cover the Praying Lord, phase one. The forest folk say the Praying Lord lived under the dark, thick canopy before even the gods came to be. They also say it will continue long after the last divine spark has burnt out. To venerate this primordial beast is to be granted bliss. To spurn its brutal love is to invite madness and death. Rarely glimpsed, even by its devout, the praying lord is a maybe a massive insect. Shaped like three layered leaves, its abdomen changes hue with the season and sports four spindly spined legs. The lord's thin thorax would better suit a man in his leathery instead of chitinous. A pair of long limbs with scything forearms sprout from its midsection. From its shoulders, a squirm of fleshy tendrils hangs. The thing's head can be best described as a ring of eyes about a severed neck, and its mouth is little more than a bloodless gash in the stomach region of its thorax. The praying lord wants nothing more to be fed and adored. Well, and the utter obedience of its followers. Slay it, and the thing's horrid truth will be revealed. That's part two. Let's take a look at the Praying Lord statistics for Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. Now, it is a CR 10 creature, so it is pretty beefy. It knows athletics, nature, religion, and stealth. It's immune to poison, as well as the poison condition and the frightened condition. It has forest camouflage, so it receives advantage when it's making stealth checks in a forest region. It has multi-attack. It's two scything arms, which do a lot of slicing damage. It has Torturous Visions, which is a play on Phantasmal Killer that basically tortures you with memories of your past, but in a distorted and very awful sort of way. It also has Blissful Caress, so it can caress you with the tendrils. You gain the Poison Condition if you fail the save, but you also become immune to Charm and Fear and regenerate 5 hit points every turn. However, when the effect ends, either because you've saved against it or a minute has passed, you are stunned until the end of your next turn. Now, the Praying Lord is a pretty simple monster. It can easily be used as a cult icon that is lurking deep in the woods that maybe that people do a ritual to every once in a while to appease, as it were. And then it can torture your players as they move through the woods with horrible visions, and they can't quite find it despite it being a massive monster. I also forgot to mention, now that I think about it, that it does have innate spellcasting, where it has Pass Without Trace, which helps with it not being found, Plant Growth, again, uh, helps with it not being found, and Chill Touch, so it can poison you with its tendrils, then hit with Chill Touch, so you don't regenerate, which is pretty nasty. All right, as I did promise, there is a Phase 2 coming. You can see the Praying Lord Phase 1 and 2. Every monster for this October, every monster for previous Octobers, and hundreds of other horror-themed creatures for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition at boxofteeth.blogspot.com. If you're more interested in the non-Dungeons & Dragons horror content that I have, or the horror fiction that I write that includes grease paint right there between my fingers, it's got a killer clown, it's a great read for the Halloween season, you can always go to www.zacharyoshea.com. I really appreciate your time and your attention. Stay tuned for part two.